This conference will now be recorded. I'll call the meeting to order, 608. Okay. Um, we have everybody here, right? Yeah, excellent. Um, as we mentioned before, I'll just kind of run the meeting until we get to elections of officers. Um, and we've also, we haven't really had a full board, I don't think, yet. So I think it was our first uh, full yeah. commission meeting. Um, at the last meeting, um, the group wanted to move um, acceptance of the minutes to tonight just to have everybody there. So you'll see in your packet we have minutes from the April 22nd meeting, which we'll need a, a motion on, and then separately minutes from the May 20th meeting, which had just Sarah, Marie, and Derek online. So I don't know if you guys wanted a minute to look through those, if you looked through them before. They have a motion to accept the minutes from anyone? I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. Mark second. Um, okay, the May 20th minutes. I'll make a motion to accept those minutes as well. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, um, moving on to agenda item number three, South Whitehall Landscapes Plan. Um, I just want to give an update. I know we've been talking about it. Uh, I wanted to, I brought some of the draft here just to help guide the work plan conversation. As we mentioned in the first meeting, we are still working on this plan, but a lot of the um, recommendations in this are specific to the EAC. Um, so some of the things that we have highlighted in the work plan, I'll jump in if there's areas that we can point to um, that we're considering in the uh, draft landscapes plan. I think the goal is to get this in a, uh, its final draft format to the BOC on July 17th. Um, and then from there, we'd be asking uh, basically for a motion to send it out and to send it back to you guys to review for kind of an official comment on that, um, whether to accept it. So I see over the month of July, being able to review this this plan. Um, any questions on landscapes? Uh, moving on to the work plan then. What I did, um, and Sarah, Marie, Derek, Help me out here if there's anything I missed or if um, I'm completely off base here. What I tried to do was take our notes from the last meeting where we talked about a lot of ideas. Um, we are really kind of mostly under the umbrella of the duty responsibility number one on page five here. Um, for anyone online, I will move that down. So um, I tried to summarize. We talked mostly about issues. Um, I highlighted what I thought were kind of the main topics that were brought up. And then we also started to talk about some actions uh, where I might have sort of woven in some actions based on our conversations there. And then I took it upon myself to add in some of the associated plans and some of the um, pieces I thought could be helpful for township duties. So. My thought was maybe we could try to move through some of the other duties and responsibilities just to get some ideas down on paper. But obviously with this one being kind of the primary goal and without Frank and Mark here last time, we definitely want to come back to this. So uh, if it's all right with you guys, um, maybe we could try to move through some of the others just so I can get some ideas down and then circle back to this afterwards. Cool. Um, so duty responsibility number two, I think some of these we can fly through. Did anyone have thoughts on this? Um, I know we kind of talked about this mostly coming from the landscapes plan, but if there's anything um, specific you guys wanted to put down here or make note of related to this responsibility. This is the um, making recommendations to the possible use of open space areas. Previously, we had talked about um, adopting a landscapes plan and then going into some mapping exercises. That's been kind of 
my thought and my approach to this. I don't know if anyone else has other ideas. Got it. Just a question. When we're talking about open spaces, we're talking about locations that are not yet parks? In no, uh, public or... and private. So some of it being existing parks. Existing parks um, as well. Okay. Yeah. So um, in the landscapes plan, one of the things that we've talked about, I think I mentioned this at the first meeting, is we've been playing around with this idea of um, categorizing different open spaces. So the difference between a stormwater management area, a passive park, an active park, and maybe a, a wild area, that sort of thing. So the thought is that we look at the sort of the undeveloped lands in the township, whether that's township owned or protected in some way, and start to look at how do we actually categorize those. And then once we have that categorization, one of the recommendations in the plan is to look at um, potentially uh, naturalizing areas or converting uses of something. So a big open uh, mode field, if there is an opportunity to naturalize that. And But we first need to start with kind of that inventory of what do we have and how do we look at those now? And I think that would be a good exercise for this group um to make those uh categorizations will the categories be defined in the plan or? yeah so um and that's that's where it'll really help once we get um the the final plan to you guys is to have so we have basically so here's kind of an example of a wild area um the plan more so defines it in terms of uh, like a preservation strategy. Um, but the idea here is that it's sort of left go to nature, zero maintenance. Um, but maybe that's something that this group, we can help put more um, parameters on that definition itself. Um, we would also I'd like, ideally like to take these categories and adopt them into our subdivision land development ordinance so that when we're looking at open space dedication, uh, there's a clear understanding of what open space should be dedicated and what that means um, for our land development. Uh, uh, we have utility area, which is another one. So that's where oftentimes uh, there might be a land development where they're getting credit for uh, dedicating open space, but it's just a stormwater basin um, and it's not they're not contributing anything to necessarily the open space. Is there a space in there that we could fit in some, some kind of solar fields that we can promote sustainability? You know, certainly not for the op preserved open space, but in what- It would fit in with the utility. utility. Yeah. Um, and I think we initially started to look at um, utility area. We were calling it stormwater area, but because of we have especially like down here we have um township open space that has um uh, this power line over here so there's definitely you know some limitations there to what that open space can be used for so i was thinking certainly looking at overhead utilities included in that i mm -hmm. thought maybe see where solar fits in maybe not necessarily the solar where like depending how large it is but maybe um you know if it's one parcel 80 acre parcel and you know 50 acres of it is um for the actual uh, solar panels and then the remainder is considered open space but that's the utility space i think that would be where that would fit yeah i would agree with the companion zoning regulation yeah that's where i mean solar has its own sort of place in zoning um and a lot of complications there um i think the benefit in considering it in your utility area is if there is any, and we've had uh, people come with developments before where they say, I'm going to leave this part aside for solar. Right. What does that do to my open space dedication? So we would just make sure that it's included in that utility. Relevant, irrelevant and relevant. I, I always wonder when the township lights the park, how do we pay for electricity? Is that like, is it like a regular customer? Do yeah, okay. yeah, we're, we're a municipal. Okay, okay. Okay. Yeah, there's, we don't supplement it in any way. Okay, I was just wondering. Do you yeah, know, like, we don't have solar and then to the grid or anything like that. Yeah. 
So, so Chris, we, we have this categorization of multiple types of open space. Is there a goal we should be striving toward to like a certain distribution of the types of open spaces we want to have in the township, or we want to convert all the mown areas to, to like naturalize the, I mean, what, you know, is there, as we look at this, is there something we should have in mind as sort of a, an overarching goal we're trying to achieve? That'd be a question I would ask uh, you guys as the EAC. So from the public engagement that we did over the past year or so, uh, there was definitely a lot of times where we brought up and, you know, Marie, I know you were someone who brought this up of the, the opportunity to re-naturalize some of our areas that aren't natural. Yeah. And that's a clear strategy in here. But as far as distribution of open space, um, I don't know if we have, I would say, clear enough goals in here yet. And that's something that we just talked about wanting to try to strive for. Of um, We look at the types of open space as you have your civic open space which would be areas around development types so you have um, your utility that we mentioned uh plazas pocket parks active parks that sort of thing and then the conservation areas and the again the purpose here was more for how are we looking to acquire those but not necessarily what is the balance of what that is for example um you know across the street uh that would be I would assume we would categorize that as a large farm in in what's uh, the category here. Um, but if there's an opportunity or would it be a recommendation, say there's not, but if there was a uh, high quality stream running through the middle of it, it's you know large farm, if we were to say, oh, well, here's a great opportunity to renaturalize an area. We have an important stream corridor. There's conservation value there and uh, we would do what we can um, to encourage uh, the preservation of that natural resource on the agricultural uh, farm. Um, the other mapping exercise I think that would be helpful is, I think we mentioned it before, looking at kind of our resource priorities um, and assembling kind of a list of uh, one of the high priority resources in the township. And that's where we would kind of look to you guys to help weight those when we talk about what are some of the things, obviously wetlands and what they do for habitat and water filtration and their scarcity, um, I would think would raise very high. But that's where we're kind of looking at the voice of the community here within it, environmental concerns. What are we uh, prioritizing as far as our resources that should be protected and then using that to um, help strategize for the goals? I think for um, the the inventory first is just looking at a blanket is what is it today and then developing those goals over time. And have townships like ours done like solar farms like taken like you said like the farm across the street for example and turn that into a solar panel jet money generator and, and it's been successful. Is that something that has been tried? tested successful or so state law is very challenging when it comes to what you can do selling back to the grid okay. we currently have zoning for on-site um, so you can develop and use solar to um, support on-site um, uh, production the park. yeah um, Pennsylvania it's it's a constantly moving kind of issue um it would be a great topic for us to explore i know that we have LA planning commission did a big um uh workshop on solar related to zoning and kind of you know what the future could look like i believe that was last year maybe a year ago um i think and i don't know if green building united was involved with that one i'm sorry There's, with some with um uh, solar was there a specific solar um, workshop put on by Lehigh Valley Planning Commission? I thought there was um, uh, maybe last fall or the fall before. I don't know if Green Building United was involved in that or not, but it was zoning related issues with solar. No, okay. of course I know we did not. But I know there's a lot of information out there because it's kind of a changing topic um, and it's, state legislation is really what drives home what the um like the economic outlook could 
to be there. Yeah, the best rec credits, they call it. Mm -hmm. Like what, what you're actually going to get back. And then the return on investment, how long it's going to take to pay it off versus what you're selling back to the grid. And as the technology gets a little better, um, it's like not as expensive and it lasts longer. But yeah, that's where the part of the problem is that the technology keeps getting better. So if you buy it now, like five years from now, it might be a higher output. So it's, it's all dependent on what the grid wants to accept mm -hmm. in, P in Pennsylvania. It's very difficult. Yeah, and, it, and it's difficult for us to kind of, you know, we feel like we're a little behind the eight ball with, with zoning related to it. So it's the understanding where the market's going, understanding where the interest is going, understanding what the uh, repercussions are and the potential impacts. Um, but as far as us doing it as a municipality, you're saying like if it's us doing it or us allowing it, I guess, is that? Uh, us doing it as a revenue generator. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, right now, the economics around solar in Pennsylvania are pretty lousy, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I mean the payback periods are. Yeah, you're lucky if you can just yeah. not necessarily generate revenue. You're lucky if you can just like, pay what the cost of the solar is. Uh, the action, what the output is, okay. the initial one. Yeah. Yeah, because you don't, I mean, you don't have as much sunlight energy in this part of the country, and, uh, you know, so the payback periods can be pretty long. Sure. We'll go nuclear. Yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we, but, but going back to, you know, trying to categorize the open space, mm -hmm. you know, uh, identifying that. Uh, maybe maybe this has happened and I've missed it, but I would love to have like a hard copy of of the of the plan to be able to have something to even go off of. Yeah, because my notes are not as good as they should. No, and it's more and it's not specific to. It's more that this is something that we included as a duty in the ordinance, and I really want to dive into the plan in the next month. Um, to talk about you know, how we use the plan and, and kind of make adjustments there, um, because this isn't this isn't finalized yet, and that's where. Yeah, <laughs> um, it's more, and we actually spent more time on this duty than I thought we would. Um, I guess are there any concerns or considerations for the um, just the concept of making use of open space areas? And what I'll do is under township duties is get copies of the landscapes plan and specifically the open space areas. And, you know, that's really what's going to, and maybe that's what we're saying in the 2024 recommendation. It's starting to dive into the landscapes plan, getting a better handle on what the categories of open space are, how we understand those categories of open space. I don't know how we can move forward without it. Yeah. Chris, in terms of, activities that this group could do i mean are there certain groups maybe we could engage like i think in the wildlands conservancy or people like that who have expertise in this area that might be helpful for us to talk with yeah absolutely i'd say you know definitely like wildlands the uh, leon county um agricultural preservation board um to, i think once we start to dig into these and maybe do our classifications maybe even talk to them or have invite them to one of our kind of more one of these, but as a workshop type of meeting. Yeah. So maybe that's a 2024 action. I like it. I'm going to put down invite um, uh, like uh, subject matter experts to workshop. Um, I had a thought. Mm -hmm. uh, it might be um, a little lighter, you know, for this, or it might be something that you do want to put in. Um, I'm thinking about, um, sorry, I just want to finish this note because, <laughs> geez, if I don't, um, I'm thinking about the parks. Uh, I know you always do every summer, the movies in the park, mm -hmm. but in the parks, but have we thought about, um, some, there's some really good movies out there at the top of my head. I mean, I have less, um. Uh, but have we thought about showing movies that have in an, um, like a documentary to have an environmental um, uh, message? Uh, I just saw something really great over the weekend about two individuals, one a, one a photographer and another one who 
rights, um, and they walked across the Grand Canyon. Mm -hmm. They did the 700 and some miles. Huh. And what they discovered about the environment and about themselves, but about what all of us could gain from that. I mean, this just was an incredible program. So I'm just, I know there are so many out there and perhaps we could put a list together, but we do a lot of movies, but is there a time during the year or a certain month when we might do something like that? I love it. As long as it's not rated R. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, why not? Uh, I, can't, I can't vouch for the hours. I can't imagine that one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm not sure screening it in the park would be the right venue, though, right? I, mean, just, I could see it here, maybe. Yeah, I mean, yeah. 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 we'll do it on the video. We have one this Friday we're testing out here. Okay. Uh, so we want to see how that goes and then try to maybe have more here. Yeah. Are, you thinking, are you thinking inside? The one you need to cancel? The or are you doing it out? Yeah, it's not going to be out here. We can also try it, you know. So this is great because this is why I want the work plan because it takes the big idea and starts to get it down. So I'm putting down here to coordinate with Parks and Rec to, you know, see what our process is for, you know, because we, we pay for the movies to come in and everything and see what we can do to source documentaries and make sure that we have the, uh, we're not pirating movies or anything right. like that. Right. Um, and to look into potential venues, you know, whether that's inside yeah. here, we'll see how it goes outside. Yeah. Potentially partner with the library, they have a nice space in there right. too. Um, right. That it could be kind of an EAC sponsored event that we could do in coordination there because they might even have, you know, I, I know they have sections, you know, full environmental sections there of books. If you don't want to get screening, Marie's being like copy. Exactly. Yeah. I don't need something, Marie, you know, only on a DVD off of YouTube. And, yeah. <laughs> Just another a little thought I had was, um, and it came up with your idea um, of the Green Gala, and then I thought to myself, there's a lot of information that this group wants to get out there, and how do we do it, to neighborhoods, because it's one thing to have something where we say, okay, we're going to have something in Coverbridge Park. Uh, are people available that night? Have all the people we want to reach to come out to Coverbridge Park, and I'm not saying don't do it. I don't think it should be there either. Oh no, 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 no. Right. But what I'm what I am saying is, can we have something like I know we have a lot of the small neighborhood small parks, so could we have something like what we call pocket parties? Mm -hmm. In other words, where we are presenting uh some material maybe it's relevant to that neighborhood, maybe stormwater is relevant to that neighborhood, and people in that neighborhood really want to know more about it, or maybe they want to know more about. Uh, planting native or whatever the case may be uh, or do we just create the idea and say okay we're not sure what they want but we'll put it out there but have offering them right in the community right there so okay we're going to be there Friday night or we're going to be there Saturday or whatever this is what we're doing it right in your community I, love and, it. Uh, I don't know, see imagine. how people respond see if they come yeah i think i mean we always wrestle with that and that's kind of like we said we're experimenting out here with the movie we used to always do the movies in the neighborhood park so mm -hmm. we would do one and it would be the neighborhood would come out and then we do another one in a different park and the neighborhood right. would come out right. there here we're curious to see how many people are going to come out for this and it's hard to get people to come out everybody's busy but yeah if you do it right there to them and i love the idea of having you know neighborhood specific topic um, if there's something that, you know, keeps arising, uh, uh, we can do that. And I'm taking these notes on page seven, duty responsibility number three, promote a community environmental program. I feel like that's where this kind of stuff all fits just for when I start to organize this. Um, under three. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah, there is. Yeah. Yeah, I think that okay. That these are all kind of see public works and <laughs> Oh, yeah, but it's there. <laughs> okay, so that's where you're putting it. Yeah, so I added the recommendations to kind of show environmental movies, documentaries, um, and then kind of the actions there is starting to look at, you know, the venues, 
or the township will coordinate with the Parks Department just to get you more information on that process and what we can do, what we can't do. And then um, the other recommendation is, you know, reaching people in the neighborhoods um, through environmental programming. And I love the idea of the pocket parties. Um, I also had in there from uh, Sarah's idea of the Green Gala. Yeah, um, okay. yeah, for those that weren't here, so do you want to talk a little bit about your thought there? I don't know where. I mean, we you know we grow cover ridge holes, but uh, just because it's the largest. But I think you know the best way to get everybody the information of what we want out is to have something where people actually want to come to, mm -hmm. where we have food, where we have entertainment, where we have where we can push our agenda quietly throughout the whole thing. We can have farmers come like have like co-op set up so you can sign up right there um you know it's really the sky's the limits uh, you know we have all local food vendors there local businesses come out just want to sell their their wares um covered bridge park gets a great attendance just for even just a band nothing to do with environmentalism mm -hmm. so those are the people that are going to come out that wouldn't normally come out so i just think for something like that it's gonna it's gonna get our agenda out a lot better than just, I don't know. Yeah, I like it. Um, we talked about, um, you know, having like tabling events and being at events that may not be specific to the EAC, but you're reaching other people. But I love the idea of having kind of an environmental oriented event that's a lot broader to bring in a larger audience. And I think, yeah, I think it's a great idea. Yeah, um, I would call it a green gap. Green gap. So mm -hmm. we can even be a little fancy with it if you want. Mm -hmm. it drops up, we could have cocktails we could have food and and we could even bring in you know try to bring in some of the more influential people in the area that have more money to kind of get them to sponsor things and you know yeah i don't know i mean there I, used to be, there's tons of ideas you know there used to be they used to do one of something like that i'm trying to think i don't think the group is still i think the group is now debunked that was running it but there used to be a green gala and they would have it. And they called the Green Gal. Oh, so very close to that, absolutely. In I mean, this in this township? No, no, in our area. They used to have to hold it down at the Allentown Brew Works. Do you remember? I attended. Oh. I attended that Green Gal. Was I it on a Wildlands? So Wildlands, we we used to have our Green Gala as the annual fundraiser, um, uh, which like yeah. we started calling it the Green Gala, and it was it was a it was a fancier sit down yes. big fundraising dinner with um. um That's what you had. That's what we had, but there, the Brew Works had a series of um, smaller events. I don't know if they were necessarily like full sit-down dinners, but yeah. they would have talks and they would have uh, almost like happy hour type of things. Yeah, no, we had a, we had a full sit-down dinner. Okay. It was up, I think, in the Hamilton Road. Oh, I nice. I cannot think of the organization, but they are no longer, they were funded. They had a grant and now they're no longer they're they, not what they're functioning. Lehigh Valley Sustainability Initiative or something. Yeah, that, like the that. Lehigh Valley Sustainability. No, well, that, no, that's not it either. Yeah. I was on that board, but no, that, <laughs> that's not it either. But but at any rate, we used to have one, and and it was amazing all the people, different people that were interested. So it's it's an interesting idea for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It would be interesting to you know you, you got me thinking about partnering with other EACs in the area mm -hmm. to kind of expand it and something like that mm -hmm. if. if the board would be interested in something like that to do kind of a, a more regional because I know like the the EAC network has done like speakers and things like that but if this could be more of the casual piece of it and it, you can maybe get a further reach um, but yeah something to consider I mean it doesn't have to be a one-day event it could be a mm -hmm. two-day event you know? big festival. What? right festival yeah. so like one day would be more of the where we would have maybe speakers or, or uh, presentations, mm -hmm. um, farmers, mm -hmm. things like that. And the next day could be more of, of where we, the sponsors bring in their money and we bring in bands and dancing and <laughs> you have to wear green. I don't know. Yeah. Just throwing that one. But yeah. 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 Chris, I think if we do something like that, we've got to put a lot of thought into what our communication plan is no. right because I, I think we've got to be really proactive in getting the word out there to make sure that people are aware of it and so it's not just put something on the website no. yeah thank you for that but i feel like unless it's in front of people they're not gonna yeah. 
they're not going to know about it. And people, oh, I, I hear it all the time. It's like, oh, I didn't know about it. It's like, well, we, you know, when we posted it to socials every day, we've only done this. You know, I don't know what the magic thing is, but as far as getting our agenda out, getting people to come to an event like that is, is going to be better than anything we ever do. So if it's, um, I see if there's kind of two directions. One, if we do partner with kind of like more people regionally, if it's like the uh, EAC network, that can potentially have a bigger reach and we can put more time and effort into promoting something like that. Or the other note I have is to kind of consider this with our event planning for the year. Like I know like for this year, we've had a couple of things that we we're putting together around, you know, fall. Like we were kind of grouping some ideas of things that we had. I think that's where we can kind of get a little bit more bang for our buck and focus on the promotion behind it. Like we have an event coming up at the end of summer with concerts and everything like that. So if it becomes either like the end of summer event or, you know, something that it's not competing with other events in the township, we can usually put a little bit more power behind that to get it out there and if we plan for it early. We can we'll even have a section of it set up for a movie. You know, for an environmental movie that's yeah. just in some corner, you know? Yeah. Sorry. My suggestion would be to try to do something on our own first. Mm -hmm. uh, because if we try to work through the CAC network, it would be five years and we're still talking about it. Okay. <laughs> no, that's good to know. I don't, I mean, I, you know, I think, I think you've you've if we can do something while, on yeah. our own and set up the model and then mm -hmm. show and say, you know, we'd like to expand this, yeah. I think that might work. But, you know, based on. My experience with the EAC network, it's it'd be really I, I think we'd, we'd struggle to get alignment on what we wanted to do here. It'd be a lot of different ideas and a lot of divergent thoughts, and it would take a long time to converge on something. So I think if we just do something smaller within the township as a starting point, I, I think we'd probably get, get it off the ground faster. I like the idea of that giving some more attention and focus to the CAC as well. Mm -hmm. And um, it kind of ties back to well, this um, this responsibility and with responsibility number one. And, and we can revisit that if you guys want, because I feel like there's a lot of good conversation there. Honestly, the rest of it, um, as I'm looking at it, is all kind of more tied in with the open space plan um, is honing in on that message um, behind the EAC and how we kind of develop that communication. And so if we had this event, because I think we could rely more on township staff to help get the nuances and the logistics of the event together, but it's the content is where we really need to, you know, um, so just something to think about with all these great, you know, outreach programs, how are we honing in on our message and, and all of that and kind of what's the goal there? And yeah. Well, speaking of that, that was like one of my thoughts for the like the the public outreach events. Like, I think we should like get some ideas of things we want to present, mm -hmm. and then like focus on like three or four. Like, just so, you know, thinking like for like the I you know with the bands in the park, like there's tons of tables there. We can have like certain like handouts, um, and or like the QR codes at least, like for some of the other you know for less paper print. Mm -hmm. um, but have like topics we. Kind of feel are important and then you know we all pick one and then kind of do a little sheet on that so that you know we're one everyone here is doing things they're interested in and then two we're getting a message out because i mean i feel like we don't really have a, a set message now yeah. it's still early but i want to yeah. kind of start to you know i think we're going to start to be very busy in <laughs> mapping exercises doing work starting to review things um so i i, I think establishing that message um and and getting that down and even if that becomes i don't know if anyone even wants to start to think about you know is there anyone that would want to take that on and starting to craft like kind of the vision statement for the eac and maybe i can put that down here um you know uh, i think we talked more in junior responsibility number one about um you know what are the issues Identify environmental problems. I wonder if maybe a recommendation would be, you know, develop an EAC mission or a mission statement or a vision statement. Anyone have thoughts on that? I think we all feel the same way. It's, we kind of want to work in tandem with the, with the BOC and the community to come up with a happy and healthy. I'm just, I'm just spitballing here. Yeah. But. I'm not a big fan of mission vision statements. I mean, okay. I, 
you, you write them and then they, you know, they get set aside and you never look at them again. No, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, this is where we had, you know, the Green Advisory Council, we had a mission and a vision statement. And I don't think unless you formulate it, I don't ever look at it again. Okay, <laughs> it's good to know. Yeah, there's and no I've point. been in lots of groups, you know, in my professional career where I can say that's exactly the same thing that happens. Okay. <laughs> and, and, I mean, in fact, what you're saying, Frank, you actually had just the luxury of looking at other organizations, you know, the same thing with us. You just, Grabbing their mission statement and just sticking on, just to have a mission statement that kind of fits we're comfortable with instead of reinventing a wheel, mm -hmm. just take it and not spend a lot of energy or time on it. I mean, we're going to have a work plan, right? I think that's, yeah, that I mean, that becomes the fact of what our yeah. statement is, right? Yeah. Plan. Every language with like, you know, indirect and like, you know, terms are always good to have, you know, to make people feel good. I guess more more so like the the elevator speech, you know, if you're at an event, kind of to your point, I, I like yeah. the idea of different topics. Like it's like, what is if you're talking to someone who doesn't even know what an EAC is, you say, oh, I'm a member of the South Whitehall EAC. What does that mean? And how, how are you, you know, relaying what you do here on a monthly basis to the average citizen or to someone, you know, at the park and say, okay, here's here's what we're doing. And then here's kind of the things that we were encouraging in the township um, with good environmental practice. Yeah. But you know, I'm saying like almost like the gag facts we used to have, mm -hmm. like just little things like that that you could you know hand out. Hopefully someone reads it, and you know if you change you know one person's mind, and it's and, a, something. Well, yeah. I kind of agree. I kind of agree with you. Yeah. I, mean, I think I, I think mission statements can be a bit wordy, and then they just you know they're there and you don't really look back at them. But I think, to your point, it is something that, when asked, it's nice to have a, a consistent. Yeah, we, yeah. I mean, if we have a definition of what. You know, yeah. yeah, I mean that's fine. We have the ordinance, but the ordinance is written in ordinance language, mm -hmm. so it's kind of like <laughs> take the ordinance and distill it down to the basics yeah. and, and make it not as legal as you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. that would be really helpful, almost like a quick. Yeah. That would be translate from like like legalese to flowery because if there was something like that my job would be so much easier <laughs> trying to take that filter to the public because i think the whole environmental issue going back to meetings i attended back a while mm -hmm. when there was real concern about rich farms mm -hmm. it was amazing some of the topics that came out from the people that attended and what was important to them mm -hmm. so some of what was important to them is what we're talking about you know here what i i hope that yeah. is and that's yeah. kind of why this yeah. is you know duty responsibility number one is what are the issues to our town? It's not, you know, uh, coastal, you know, degradation. Right. Here. Yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. So when the people say, well, what does the EA, what are you doing with the EAC? You know, if we do put any kind of statement together, and it can be, it can be flower. I mean, it has to reach all people, all people, you know, in a language that everyone could understand. But, uh, yeah, we might want to reflect some of that back, and maybe that's what's in the ordinance. You know, I, I don't know if you distill that, you know, but reflect it back that, yeah, we heard you. Yeah. Yeah, we're hearing you, which, 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 that we want to represent the community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, then maybe, I mean, you know, when we'll go to these events, you have a meeting or something, it should be more information gathering than information disseminating, right? In terms of asking people, mm -hmm. you know, we're the AC, here's what we do. Mm -hmm. What do you think are the priorities, right? I mean, yeah. you know, try to use it as a way to get feedback and, and you know, bring people in. That's a great. That. That's a very good suggestion. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I like the idea. Of <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it kind of takes us back. I like the idea of where we're going with how to get to people at the events, but it's like we could still do those events, but instead of explaining something to people and sharing, it, they're just information gathering and help to shape and then we take it back here and formulate that into something we can do. So I, I think when we do communicate out to people, it should be, you know, here are things you can do, right? As opposed yeah. to just, you know, generally you know, big issue kind of thing. It should be, you know, here's how you can participate in you know, more environmentally sustainable community. 
do the act locally part of the think globally thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I have to say, I know it's so terrible, but I think a lot it, to help people pay attention, and it shouldn't be this way, but they want to feel incentivized. It's, what are they going to come up with, right? And so I don't know what that is, but I can say I, I know my mom has gotten like a silly, but like a composting, you know, thing. Mm -hmm. People want that. People, mm -hmm. You know, that would incentivize someone to, to start composting in their backyard if we were able to provide that to them. Or what was the rate? Those might be too much, but the rainwater right. levels. No, yeah. We were talking about that last year. And, um, I don't know what that answer is, but something to incentivize people to actually participate mm -hmm. always makes them pay attention. Yeah, I mean, we can certainly look into whether it's like a prize for participating in a survey. You know, a survey that says, tell us, you know, what are your top environmental, you know, concerns in South Whitehall Township? And uh, along with that, there's some information provided about some of the things that we know. and. You can enter a raffle to win a rain barrel or everyone, you know. Rain yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You could, you know, have a couple of door prizes or something like that. So, yeah, I, I think these are great ideas. I think you're right on with including, yeah, bribing people, right? Is that what you're exactly. saying? Is that what you're saying? Exactly. <laughs> but incentivizing participation. Um, and that gives us something to work off of for, you know, as these community programs are being developed, to consider, you know, is there a budgetary need? Is there a uh, need for either you know, like sponsorships or something like that? Because sometimes you can get some of that in for uh, some of those prizes, for lack of better words, from someone. Like um, I know, like Emmaus. I'm so upset. I live in Emmaus, and the Arts Commission has beautiful rain barrels that they had. Uh, I think you could. They were auctioning them all, and they were all done by the Arts Commissioner or by artists and. Uh, Sometimes you can get maybe someone to sponsor, you know, something else. I remember like probably 15 years ago, I know someone was giving away there. I think someone even mentioned like Coke was doing it at one point, but there were like rain barrel giveaways. Hmm. Um, so, and, you know, assuming that could have happen again. Trees, I think someone mentioned earlier trees, you know. Well, and something with some of the larger businesses in the area, so that would fall under uh, number. Perhaps, um, or number six, maybe number six, partnering with some of the larger businesses in the area to incentivize them with in order to give back to the mm -hmm. community, whether it be they install solar or you know, something as a giveaway to the city. Or can the township provide some kind of designation that says, you know, you are. EAC partner or whatever, like yeah, by, right. by, by yeah. what you're yeah. doing, right? So you get ten percent off your tax. Yeah. I mean, you know, right. if, if right. we're going to do something and we can recognize that yeah. in some way, and, yeah, you know, and yeah, publicize it in some way, I think that would be really that could provide some incentive. Yeah, and the rain barrels are, are good too because they really help with stormwater. Mm -hmm. we, we we do receive continue to receive a number of stormwater complaints or, or mm -hmm. concerns. So that could really help, um, you know, to track how much water you're putting, how much volume you're putting on your property. And it drives home that kind of what was said before, learning the like learning the concern and then here's how we can help you and here's what you can do at home and here's here's a rain barrel. <laughs> so I don't think they realize how easy it is and they adopt it into their everyday mm -hmm. practice, but unless you sort of sort of shove it in their mm -hmm. face, they're not gonna are you saying like the barrel itself should be branded by South Whale in some way? Why not? You know, like a we're, I'm thinking like a store even, you know, we're a company. Okay. Yeah, like yeah. sponsored by, you know, okay. um, yeah. Albright's hardware or whatever, you know, and get a rain barrel or something. And, yeah. Are you good for a hundred of them? Or if you're good for two hundred of them. You know, they don't doesn't But then Albright's would get some recognition by the township. Exactly. Doing that, yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Amazing. And I know in your Lower Merion piece that you sent us, mm -hmm. Chris, I was looking over that today and somewhere in here I'm trying to find it, but they also had a program where they recognized the property of like homeowners, homeowners who do something, who have done something that is green, be it their native plants, be it whatever they did, that they receive, maybe it's a small sign, maybe mm -hmm. it's, it's some kind of recognition is what they were doing in neighborhoods 
in order to incentivize the rest of the neighborhood. And a sign in their yard would be exactly what does that, what, what those, mm -hmm. someone who puts that effort into it. Oh, want. yeah, they want, yeah. yeah they're, just they're, saying, I am official. <laughs> that's a big recommendation coming out of the plan is that, like, considering a specific program like that, so that's something I would definitely want to revisit. And how do we do that? And what's a good example? Because when we're talking about what you can do at home, can you naturalize your property at home? How do we make sure that they can do that without being in violation of our high weeds right. and grass ordinance? How can we make sure that they're doing it in a way that, you know, they're getting the recognition for doing the right thing, but it's in a controlled way? Yeah. I have to give it like one timeline where they understand like the four corners. Or the somewhere it's like just the corner, not the middle. Do the start mm -hmm. with the corner. That way, as the township, maybe we can then understand the look at that that oh, there it is. We know it's in the corner. So yeah. we know that they're actually trying to not be in violation, but they're trying to be organized about it. You know? Yeah. The question is, is it a township program, and what does that mean? From you know, administering that program, is it through another program that's out there, like the backyard habitat mm -hmm. through oh, yeah. like a, like maybe PA Audubon does something like that. Like yeah, I think you had mentioned that. And yeah, like in your, like you have a sustainable uh, forest, you know, that. The stewardship, yeah. Or the stewardship, yeah. yeah. Like that's the a specific. Watershed, yeah, watershed certified. And mm -hmm. that, that, was the, that was the key to it. That was the key to get that from my perspective. But and yeah, the if there's a program. The stewardship, the stewardship is different. That's yeah, I was going to say. No, the watershed certification, the water, yeah, that, that we got through. Nurture nature and uh, Penn State. Okay. You know, but, uh, I mean, obviously, you have to do things, but yeah. you know what I mean? You just can't say, it, I want it. You, know, you have to prove some things. You know. I, I just wanted to circle back to, you know, once we get the map and we're able to start identifying mm -hmm. you know, open space, this is a watershed and that. So, you know, when we give our recommendation for, for an area specifically to be a watershed, how then would that be? enforced as to not be filled in, let's say, or... So I think we'd start with just, I like the idea of starting with kind of the resource priorities by saying what, you know, no property boundaries on it, no nothing, just over, I, we like to you know overlay the resources and start to see what pops out. And if we can point to, this is clearly an area that has um, a lot of quality of one way or another for the environment. That's something we need to consider as a priority. And then we kind of take it back and we say, okay, well then let's look at where the property boundaries are. What kind of property is this? Is it public? Is it private? And then where do the recommendations go from there? If it's public, that's easy. We can start to talk about, you know, what can we do? What can't we do? If it's private, maybe it points us back to what are some of the things that we can consider as working with the private landowners, if it's encouraging them to participate in a naturalizing program, if it's considering, you know, uh, preserving a piece of the property through an easement, um, if it's giving them, you know, information on some of the stormwater management benefits of um, doing something differently. Um, so we, I think we start with the initial mapping without anything, just to have that kind of clear you know direction of these are the areas that we see are important and then develop strategies from there i'm getting ahead of myself <laughs> no I, I, mean, I think it's a good question but like does that help i mean i you answered another question okay uh, but i suppose that's so far, my question was so far down the road and it's not something that we would be able to have any part in um and I, I guess I was speaking for my art about a personal issue of just people feeling in balance. So I just. Oh, uh, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, it's this whole no, issue. There was a long one. Yeah, that's why I suppose those okay. projects. Yeah, no, no, because that's a possibility. You know, it happens. I see it. Yeah. yeah. Legally or illegally? Illegally. You're saying people are just filling in wetlands randomly? If you say it, it's legal or not. Okay. I just look at it and I think it's wrong and it should be happening. Right. But I don't. I mean, I can, I can, I know of one that was definitely not legal, but I, you know. It, it kind yeah, of it shouldn't be occurring. I mean, yeah. it creates so many problems yeah. across the entire town. Yeah. 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 It kind of goes back to our question at the last meeting with like the stormwater, and we were talking about like stormwater yeah. construction state. Like, yeah, like it's kind of like if you see something that you think is wrong, 
it probably helps with just a call, maybe first to the township and then maybe it goes somewhere else. Um, and then there's also the side of where, you know, if there isn't anything wrong as far as, you know, uh, they are going about something illegally and it just seems like this isn't the best practice, then that's where we can talk about education and maybe programs. Okay. Yeah, it's a good starting point. I mean, like, lastly, like, I mentioned about your wetlands, if they're filled in illegally, I mean, the Army Corps of Engineers literally goes out and makes you remove and meet Do it. they really? Yeah, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's serious stuff. Yeah. But I mean, I worked at a project years ago with a guy who was like, you know, was a, a junkyard and was like, it's my property. Can I just fill these in? Right. So the so educational was piece. Ignorant on that part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, being on the front yeah, end. Yeah, it's But yeah, call the EP. They can go over aerial photos a while ago. Mm -hmm. I've seen him do it. Yeah. 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 Is Frank right there? I, it, it, who? Oh. Frank's right there. No. I was <laughs> Mike? Yeah, I, when he can, um, he's yeah. coaching basketball. So <laughs> um, we said it's easier if uh, we can kind of bring him in when there's either, you know, a specific topic or um, we just feel like it's a good, I think kind of at the end of the work plan, once we go over that, we'll make sure that he can be here for that meeting, but out of respect for his personal time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, because there, there could be a lot of staff at meetings that we try to be cognizant of not having so many people there uh, if they don't need to be. So we try to, you know, split it up how best we can. But um, yeah, if you see someone filling in wetlands, call someone. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's another, that's another day. Another. Yeah, because we can handle it. You know, we can start with the conservation district and the mm -hmm. and then also the EP and the coordinate with the Army Corps of Engineers if that's necessary. There's a lot of avenues. Maybe he did it legally. Maybe that's why it's possible. nothing if, happened. If we have reported yeah. you know, the DP or even an email, it won't hurt. You know. I did do an email. I think I called. But there, I mean, the, kind of your initial point, there is recourse for that kind of stuff. If it's under, if it is a legitimate wetland or if it's, you know, the stream or if it's something, um, a lot of times it's not necessarily the township that is the enforcement on that. Uh, it's usually the state, but, uh, or as we mentioned last time, conservation district, but we can kind of help to get the right message to the right people. Um, yeah. And if it's not, then we try to promote the right thing happening because that happens all the time. I mean, in, certainly in like rural townships um, where there might be something that is perfectly legal, but it might not be, you know, the best environmental practice. Um, uh, oftentimes people just aren't aware. And it's yeah. not until you have that awareness program say, hey, you're doing a practice this way. You can do it this way and you can still, you know, maintain the property as you are and it has an environmental benefit. But, like Grand there you go. Um, as we're kind of approaching the hour, and I know we started a little bit late, was there anything related to the other duties that anyone wanted to talk about? Again, these are kind of, I can, if you're okay with it, I can kind of fill these in and we can revisit them after we go through the, um, the landscapes plan and kind of make the comments from there. But I see these, number four, we, we did talk about a lot today, um, and that's the, um, uh, open space um, categorization and kind of I, I see it as our map of um, open spaces. I also see this eventually leading into updating our official map. Um, and then duty five, um, that's where we talk about the, uh, if we look into an open space program, that's another recommendation out of this plan is, um, you know, actually pursuing kind of an active open space program where we're in township would look to acquire properties and easements and protect properties. Um, so we've kind of mentioned in the past of developing sort of a system uh, with you guys and how we evaluate that and how we, you know, how the EAC can support that um, uh, sort of the direct conservation and preservation of properties. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, well, if there's, 
<laughs> if there's things to think about, like that's where we're still kind of making edits to the landscapes plan. So if you have thoughts on on that that we should be thinking about here, I don't know if there's something <laughs> specific you want to bring up with that. No, I would doubt. No. Okay. <laughs> we can work on. I know you mentioned earlier about the types, but like, like, are we? Are they going to review the open space areas based on those types as well? Like, the, like, here's a good example of, uh, you know, uh, farm. Here's a good example of a farmette or, or, um, you know, of, of a natural area that has like high value for steep, yeah. flat, steep slopes or something like that. Like, are, are we I think it's the leads of that. Group? Yes, uh, I think we're going to start with more of it as a mapping exercise, and then once we have the properties, I think then we can start to say, are there properties that are privately owned that have significant natural resources and that maybe we should be considering for a more aggressive approach to preserving the, those resources and then we can kind of go from there um i think a good uh direct connection to that would be recommending properties for the official map so then that goes through the official map process um and then that helps us get you know ahead of the game for um, kind of our preservation opportunities. And is that down the road, Chris? Or is that now? Uh, we have to get through this, and then the I think recommendations to you. Recommendations for like properties. Yeah. I think I I like the idea of not focusing on properties first, focusing on resources first. So mm -hmm. I would say if you want to start to think about what what we can use to identify high value resources um you know we talk about wetlands so i think of having the mapping of you know uh mapped wetlands for through the uh, national wetlands inventory that's a you know a, a layer that we can use to start to lay out on a map and identify where the official wetlands are um, that we know of in the area um and things related to habitat, stormwater uh, issues. What about, um, are we classifying like high quality view sheds as part of that? Are we, are we, is, can we designate that as that a natural resource or no? We have definitely with? talked about it in this plan. Right. I wasn't necessarily gonna task this group with doing it because it, it's really tough to do. Right. Um, we are experimenting in GIS and doing some view shed analysis, um, certainly related to the zoning overlay update where it's more of a, um, a defined area and you have kind of the hill and valley piece of it. Um, so we're, we're definitely looking at that and the thought of applying it would be through um, more so that zoning ordinance as a protection other than across the whole township only because it's a very difficult thing to point to where it is and where it isn't unless you have um, a robust sort of view shed analysis. Do we have a list of all the possible resources that, that we can forward to the EAC so that they can start reconciling those types of resources with what's in the township? I can start to compile a list. Yeah, yeah. I think that would be helpful for everybody, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that you know what you start to look for. Yeah, because yeah. we're, we're in, very much in the dark as far as mm -hmm. you know where uh, all these parks. Because there's a lot, lot of beautiful little parks, but unless you kind of drive and trip over them or they're in your neighborhood, you have no idea. Yeah, and you want to know what you're looking for when you're looking. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We may be able to come up with some, but not all of what the requirements are. There. Right. All the priority. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that would be really great. Yeah. yeah. That's nice. Um, oh, the last one, and more so, this is duty responsibility number six. I just wanted to kind of get some thoughts if you guys had any questions about this one as we're developing the plan, um, the work plan, I should say. Um, think of this work plan as what do you need to appropriately handle these duties? So whether that's you have an idea of what you need to do, you just need direction, or you have no idea what to do, you need more information. Um, so for this one, the responsibility is 
reviewing subdivision land development plans and according with the subdivision land development ordinance. Um, and then the EAC would prepare uh, a recommendation and, and I would help with that to the planning commission for when a land development comes in. My thought is that we would update Saldo um, to have some of that information specifically, but even in lieu of that, is there, is it helpful maybe to have land development 101? Is it helpful to have other examples of, you know, uh, what other boards are doing, what planning commission is doing, maybe have someone talk to you guys from planning commission or what can we do? Do you need anything related to this duty? Um, just to kind of help move things forward. No, I think it's a good idea. I, I think as a start, they should know which provisions of the saldo are applicable, right? Because right. they're not reviewing the entire saldo. No. You're, you're, it's limited scope, so I think we need to parse out the provisions that... Well, we actually need to add them in. <laughs> that's, oh, we, have we don't have them in there okay. right now, yeah. That's... <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Yeah. Really good yeah. <laughs> Okay. Um, and, and that's because we it's almost pretty specific as to say the Park and Recreation Board mm -hmm. has specific provisions in there of what they're doing. Once we adopt the landscapes plan, we'd like to update Saldo with the uh, reference to the open space categories uh -huh. and the give guidance to what this board would be responsible for. But, but in the board. interim, there's nothing in the Saldo that would fall under the categories of preservation and resources. And so we, we have to build all that in, is that what you're telling me? I think we should build it in for clarity. Okay. okay. Yeah, because it, it, it's it's not explicit right now. I don't like to leave it open to interpretation just because that could very easily... make this a priority, then, in your opinion? I think, I think updating Saldo, definitely, make mm -hmm. a priority. Um, the review piece of it, we can, you know, come back to, but working on updating Saldo um, to include that absolutely okay. All right. this, one, this one seems difficult because i'm not sure we have a goal we're trying to work toward when we look at these plans right i mean what are we trying to achieve right and yeah our review. I mean, that that's kind of back to the point of why it's not in south though like so for the park and rec board it's very clear of the park and rec board has kind of their their goals we just updated our park and recreation plan, um, and they're looking specifically for um, recreation improvements and land related to recreation. Or fees and loop. And, or fees and loop. Right. Um, this is a little bit different in, I would say, that first um, uh, responsibility of identifying problems should be used to help understand what this board is actually looking at. We've kind of talked in the Shade Tree Commission meeting earlier, Shade Tree has a pretty focused scope of trees, not really necessarily shrubs, uh, but mostly trees in the right of way for a land development plan. If we expand that kind of same idea of whether we're looking at trees and species and habitat and that sort of thing, or is it looking at um, use of property? Is it looking at, um, I think it was you who asked before about the goal of open space. Uh, if there is a development proposed and they're proposing more recreation open space, or if they're proposing more natural area, or if they're proposing a farm, that is going to be looked at by this board. So I guess that's where having the idea of what you're looking for is important to come up with. <laughs> um, I can see it as in the most uh, simplistic way of putting it into Saldo is specifically looking at the categories of open space and making a recommendation as to um, if you're okay with the category of open space, if you have issues with it, if for example, they say, well, this is our open space, we have 50% of the property is open space and 70% of that uh, dedicated open space is all for stormwater, and then the rest is um, uh, parkland, but it's in an area identified as um, uh, all rules or something like that. So I think that would be a good recommendation to say, well, 
there's woodland sioux here we want to preserve the woodlands and um you talk about cutting them down and yeah you're saying it's open space we're cutting down and putting stormwater management and a park through there does that help a little bit in kind of the scope of what i think we could be looking for a little bit yeah I mean, it's still i'm not sure how we how we weigh you know what's better what you know what's a better use of open space mm -hmm. you know I, I, there's some value judgments there that i'm not sure we are equipped to be making yeah i i don't know i i mean that's kind of where we have a guiding document that lays that out right, yeah. to give you the tools in yeah. order to make yeah. that that call. Right. Yeah. Like here's here's a here's a, a a philosophy or a strategy or something, and then does the development adhere to that overarching kind of philosophy? And right. Then, and then we can we can look at it in that context. And that's yeah. where I, I see it as kind of this as being that initial guiding document, but this isn't going to give the uh, level of detail of what specifically to look for, but it's going to say, I mean, this is kind of our, it's our resource preservation plan. So if the open space preserved, if you can point it back to, does that help preserve the resources that were identified as a priority here? It's kind of on the board to uh, determine that. Um, if not, you can make a recommendation as to maybe the way that it can be better incorporated. And then ultimately that goes to, you know, discussions at the planning commission. I mean, could it be something as simple as saying, you know, we, we want to look at the plan and drive toward minimizing environmental impact. Yeah. You know, and then the, what, 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 you know, does this plan, are there alternatives to the plan that's been offered that would provide less environmental impact? And maybe that's the lens we use to look at it and say, could you consider doing this instead of what you're planning because it has less environmental impact? Yeah, I think that's great. Um, and I think that's a kind of across the board philosophy that you can kind of take in depending on the plans. But then um, we have kind of a, a goal we're driving toward, which is minimizing environmental impact. Right? right. We have we have something that we're kind of using as a as a as a and that's the criterion, right? Yeah, it's just with the municipality's planning code. Yeah, right. Yeah. Which right. encourages low income development. Mm -hmm. so that, would, that would be you can give us more uh, credibility. This is great. I'm I'm kind of putting that into the you know the work plan as the goal or is to the recommendation is to develop that you know and formulate that goal for how you're reviewing it in, in this year. Because again, we might not bring anything to you guys until you know we're comfortable sure. with yeah. that. Um, and I think that's kind of the what we can work towards now and just so everyone feels like they're on the same page as what they're looking for. Is it in the, the landscapes plan I identified what each open space, the verbiage for each open space, or is that something that we have to adopt ourselves? It is a little bit. Um, for, for us to be able to, 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 to say what we want as an open space, you know, maybe you could define for us what yeah. you want us to use for that open space. Yeah. Wetlands, what else, you know, what else, yeah. what are the verbiage? And then, you know, going off of what Frank said, to be able to establish an idea of, of what makes sense. Well, we have this much percentage of wetlands. Maybe you can, maybe we can use this open space for something else because we have this much. Yeah. yeah I like you know, like a percentage wise, where we have 50% of open fields that are just sort of, Kind of just hanging out. Okay, that's fine. Maybe we have enough of those. Maybe we need a little bit more of this. I I I know exactly what you're talking about. I yeah. like the philosophy. I think maybe it seems like what would be helpful in the review next month of this plan is to maybe start to talk about adding a little bit more detail to these definitions and whether that gets actually included in the plan or becomes a supplement mm -hmm. to the plan, like in an appendix. Um, and just spending the time now really honing in on those open space categories and having very clear definitions of those. Yeah. And we can kind of workshop what the the pros and cons of that would be. Because sometimes it's you back yourself into a corner if you're too specific. And, and we, we've had that in yeah. pieces of, you know, Saldo and our zoning ordinance as well. So we're trying to be cognizant of having a little bit of flexibility so that we can make interpretations, appropriate interpretations, 
Um, but I think adding a little bit more detail to these classification, classifications would be a good exercise next yeah, month. Yeah, I think we have to build the foundation first and then layer by layer add the pieces of, to get to the whole you know, idea of, of what we're doing with the duties and the responsibilities. That'll but, save time on our side because then we'll know what you clearly want from the get-go. Exactly. Well, I think it'll give our, our recommendations more credibility too, right? Because oh, we're, yeah. we're all yes. talking from the same. We're not all over the place. Yeah, right? it's not subjective. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you know, yeah. the developer is going to think way differently than we do about okay. like, what you know right. natural is. Like he'll be like, oh, I just left it as it was. It's going to calculate itself, and mm -hmm. you know, if we don't have you know <laughs> that was ruled, yeah. you know, that's what's going to you know, yeah, mm -hmm. and they'd be right, you know. I think it's great. Um, I think it's helpful. And that's why, too, we didn't want to give too much of, and we're still working through some of the pieces of it, especially kind of our internal review of this. But I didn't want to just kind of give it a, oh, here's the plan, because I think we still need to kind of work some of these ideas into the plan. Um, but you like talking about it is better to establish something and then mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, build, and, you know, build upon it. Yeah. Because I can see people arguing over that and you're delaying implementing anything for. You know, months or years because you're arguing over, you know, what a natural habitat is. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. True. Okay. Anything else for the work plan now? Um, what we can do is I can try to take these notes and put them all together um, so that next month we can kind of review a final draft of this work plan if that works for you guys. And then Take take that to the BOC. Mm -hmm. um, Craig, I know you had mentioned kind of short term goal, short term goals, long term goals. Um, do you think we should try to work through some of that in the recommendations? And should I try to, or I mean, I can try to prioritize typing up these notes this week, get it back out to you guys, and we can kind of workshop that before the next meeting, and you can kind of. Um, send your notes and your feedback, and then we can, at the next meeting, we'll review the final plan or the final draft. I mean, I think the work plan is the most important piece right now. And then, mm -hmm. you know, ideally, once we have the work plan we've all agreed on, that the, you know, short-term actions will kind of fall out of that, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we have to do that. No. I, I, don't, I think identifying short-term actions before we have the work plan would be kind of, you know, Probably not as productive as mm -hmm. waiting to have the work plan and then kind of you know use that as a uh, as a starting point to say what are the things we can start now and have some short term goals from fall out of that. Um, what are we Makes sense. Mm -hmm. That's good. Sounds good. Um, uh, agenda item five, courtesy of the floor. I think we might still have someone online. No, there was someone online. Anyone else have anything um, not agenda related? Okay. So next meeting, um, I'll send out the uh, work plan, the kind of draft beforehand, my notes on that. We'll hopefully get it to the point that we can kind of review it. Um, if there's some final, you know, touch-ups, tweaks, or whatever, um, we can talk about that. But then, ideally, uh, agreement to send it to the BOC for the first August meeting. It would be, mm -hmm. um, and then um, we'll review the landscapes plan as well. Next meeting. Next meeting. Yeah. Can we have a contact list of everybody? Yes. Yes. I'm sorry. I think you did ask me about that no, last time. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I send everybody's email, but what I'll do is I'll just write the name, that email. That email. Yeah. 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 Phone number, maybe. It's up to you guys. If you want phone numbers, um, I put it to the group. I don't want my own. I know you have mine already. Exactly. Everybody's good with phone numbers. I think Frank will know it called you. So you know, yeah. for Yeah. We'd be looking to. Maybe extend the next one or two meetings to 20 minutes or yeah yeah and we can I think we have it as an hour but I mean we can go as long and we can advertise it as such uh, well 
Oh, I think we just advertised the start date. Okay. Like the start time. Yeah, I never know. We're good. But should we all plan to maybe spend like yeah. minutes? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I Especially. Be yeah. 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 Right. yeah. And then as we get in, we'll kind of do the same with some of the other exercises. I think like 90 yeah. minutes and we'll have it more as like a, a work, working yeah. kind of. But it's better if we agree on that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mark, are you good with that? We said um, next month we'll expect to have it, this be like a 90 minute meeting. We've been kind of just running over. Um, and I think to get through um, the work plan and talk about landscapes. Um, and then do you have any issues with uh, if I send a contact list out? Um, yeah, phone number? Are you good with everybody having phone numbers? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You know what? Everything I swear to goodness, if you wanted to, you could get anybody social. I, it's amazing. Like there's nothing safe. You know, I used to think, oh, your cell phone's safe. Like no one will know your cell phone. That's like their cell phone. You know? Oh yeah. <laughs> you know? Look up anything about it. Yeah. Yeah. Unless there's anything else, uh, motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. Maria, Maria. All right, all in favor. Okay, thanks, John. 724. Yeah. yeah. It's just.